everyone. Welcome back. Uh, it's been two weeks since our last episode. We had to take a little hiatus. We had to get our mental health, our physical health, get everything back in order. So we are back on track. We're back with you. It's the Unholy Brotherhood of the Electric Church. I'm Dustin. It's my partner, Will, over there. Say hi, we're, Will. We are back, and we're feeling a lot better now. Feeling fantastic. What happened with you? Were you did you have a stomach bug, or was it like sinuses, or a little bit of both? It was just a little bit of everything. I think just all the weeks of working and not sleeping very good and eating too much and drinking, they just all called up to me and I was in a funk for like three days and then uh, I finally snapped out of it and I'm feeling a lot better now getting back out and exercising and the weather's getting warmer. So I'm getting outside and, you know, and that, it, it wasn't as bad as what you've been going through. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows I'm fat, um, also diabetic. So, you know, but that's, Hey, Got some unsatisfactory results on my lab works, my 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 piss tests and everything. Just they, and nothing looked good. Uh, kidneys were probably going to shut down soon. So made some significant life changes on my end. And I think a lot of what I've been going through uh, as far as like gallstones, kidney stones, whatever the fuck is going on in my gut with my gut health was all a factor of the diabetes, the kidney issues. Just so, yeah, finally, and, you know, for the first time in my life, really taking uh, my health seriously, you know, I'm 34, going to be 35. I don't want to die this early, dude. No. Uh, and that kidney stuff is that serious business. You don't want to mess around with that. Yeah. So this medicine they got me on though, man, it's, it's just, it's fucking amazing. Uh, I'm not going to give it away. Cause I don't want you weight loss fanatics to go steal my fucking supply. And <laughs> <eat> it, <God laughs> <damn> it. <laughs> so, uh, but it's awesome. It curbs my appetite. Um, you know, really helps me make healthier choices drinking nothing but fucking water all the time. Like, I mean, nice. my piss is color is great. I still got nice. a little foam, which is due to proteins in your urine. That's part of my kidney issues is high protein in my urine, but it's not near as bad of, as what it was even a week ago. So filtering all that shit out, cleansing everything out, feeling great. Lost, uh, from, like I said, uh, when we were talking before this morning, this little electronic scale I have here, I weighed myself last week with it when I first started the shot. And I've been weighing myself just about every day. Uh, if that is true and accurate, I'm down uh, 15 pounds in a week. So Wow, nice, man. Congratulations. A lot of people say, like, when you look it up, is it healthy to lose 15 pounds in a week? And it's not really, but it said that people were morbidly obese, which I am. I mean, I'm, my body mass index is high. So, uh, you know, they, they're prone, especially with drastic diet changes, exercise changes you're prone to lose that weight faster than like, say someone like you, if you wanted to shed 10 pounds, it'd take you probably a month or two, maybe even more than that. Right. Yeah, and exactly. Maybe even some could be from water weight, you know, because I was bloated and shit now drinking more water, watching my sodium intake, you know, but yeah, if I can feel amazing, I mean, you could tell I've been up since six 30 this morning. No, I, I have one cup of coffee at like one o'clock this afternoon and that's it. And I'm, I'm fucking amp, dude. I'm just, I'm always, I feel like I'm on until I'm ready to go to sleep. And then I hit that switch and I'm asleep and I wake up and I'm fucking on again, you know? Nice. Yeah. That's a good feeling. Yeah. So you, for you people out there that are out of shape, like I was, and like, I still am start working to get better. Cause, uh, like we were saying when I, uh, before we started recording, I said, you don't know how bad you feel until you start feeling good. You don't know how sick you are or how unhealthy you are until you start getting healthy. It's, right. Yeah. It's an it's an amazing transition to start fucking feeling good, man. I'm telling you. So, so it's a beautiful thing. You were working a lot though. You had uh, we used to call them whenever I worked in traditional retail like you. We called them the makeup faces. You know the yeah. people that are good for the cameras and yeah. Uh, you had a visit from those higher ups. Uh, my question on that is, what in the fuck is going on with Buckshot? Was he there for these interactions, or did you guys keep him off the schedule? Yeah, he's like the little bastard son you keep in the closet, right? Yeah, we tried to keep him off, like, out of the scenes, like, kind of more or less in the shadows, but he didn't enjoy any of it because he likes listening to the country music on his phone. And, like, when we're back in the meat room, we're cutting meat and putting, you know, getting stuff ready to go out in the case. They don't really, they can't really hear what's going on. Customers can't hear it. So he listens to his music well with the, 
people being there. He couldn't listen to his music. So it's like every like two hours, he was like, can I turn my music back on, man? I was like, no, they're still in here. He was like, man, it's stupid. And get all <laughs> pissed off and everything. And I'm like, dude, it's one day. Relax. He's like, no, this is just stupid. And like, they would come through and, uh, They'd be like, hey, how you doing? I was like, yes, yeah, this is uh, Josh. He was like, oh, hey. They looked at Josh. Hey, how you doing, man? And and he didn't even say anything. He just looked <laughs> at him. He was all pissed off. You motherfuckers ruining my my listening to Hank Williams Sr. He he doesn't even listen to Hank Third. Probably he listens at, uh, what's, what? hey, good looking. Yeah, what he does. You got cooking? He listens at old Dude, timey. He- he loves Hank Sr. He told me one time we were working just out of the blue. He was like, you know, at the Grand Old Opry, there's a statue of Hank Sr. in front of it. And I'm like, okay, that's great, man. Thanks. Appreciate that. You needed to know that tidbit of information. Yeah, I, I couldn't give a flying fuck. I, yeah, I don't think I could either. Man, you know who they need to induct into their – or well, I mean, he, he performed there recently. I think it was last year, the summer of 22 – uh jelly roll jelly roll you they like need, him hell yeah i like him i liked him dude and people don't really realize this but the, what they don't know about jelly roll like he's got this whole country rap gimmick now people don't know jelly roll from what about 10 15 years ago when he was rapping yeah. with three six mafia dj paul little yeah. like because they they kind of or who brought him into the game and brought him up you know, and he made that transition to that. But I like his country rap too. But even the country rap, he still brings Lil White on that. Like they have yeah. an album together, actually. That's crazy. Jelly Roll back in the day was doing songs with Lil White, and everybody knows Lil White from the famous song Oxycontin, which you know, looking back on it now, especially with the times how they are currently, that is such a terrible song, man. It's just promoting so much uh prescription drug abuse it's not even funny and they make it seem so cool and so fun now jelly roll is a country fucking i don't know what bumpkin i guess you'd call him married to a fucking porn star and shit or whatever she is i think she, i don't think she's a porn star so i, I don't want to put that out there but i think she does like only fans and shit which who fucking doesn't with you know huge tits and a big ass anymore yeah, you know, so but I mean, more power to him, dude. But I, man, I just feel him on a personal level, too. And I think that's why he's resonating so much now with people like that song. Save me. I'm sure. Have you heard that one? Yeah, I think so. That's a fucking banging song, dude. And it's real. Like you can feel it's like real and from his fucking soul. And I, that's why I don't know his shit just and he seems like a real ass dude. Like he's somebody. Seems like, Somebody told me one time that getting into country music is the best thing you can do for your career because country music sells concert tickets and it it's just a you know it's just something big to get into. You can make a lot of money from it. Oh yeah, man. And by and large, it's still one of the and they have their moments where they're PC and all this, but it's still like outlaws are celebrated in country. Yeah, you know they tried to cancel that Morgan Wallen kid. Not, I mean, they're selling his songs. Like, I'm not a huge country person, but sometimes I'll listen to, especially when I'm drinking in the summer. I want to feel like a redneck. You know, I'll throw some country music on and I'll be like jamming to it. But they tried canceling him. He said, "Fuck you, can't cancel country boy." (laughs) You know, he wrote that shit like nothing, dude. It was like his sales went up. It was like when they tried canceling Joe Rogan. It's just like fuck you cancel me then bitch but the only thing is morgan wallen went out and like apologized and all fuck that don't apologize for who the fuck you are i'll are never so- apologize for shit we say on this podcast whether i'm right or wrong i might tell you that i don't have the right context in a situation or a conversation and maybe i'll change my stance on something but i'm not going to apologize for what i say because it's what i'm fucking thinking dude i'm not going to apologize for me being me fuck you how is it that some people can get canceled and then some people are just immune to getting canceled? You know how like certain people get canceled for the littlest thing, but then another person will have something, a big scandal going on, but their their career will continue to thrive. I don't, I think it just boils down to really how they handle it, dude. And if it is like a sincere fuck up where they catch them with the hard R, you know, and or, you know, it's for a white person to say something like, and they sincerely apologize and they do something, you know, they, people make mistakes, make mistakes and they want to see that honesty, you know? Yeah, they do. 
So, but I mean, and then there's the other people that are like, what the fuck are you canceling me for? I just said what I was feeling and, and what I believe. You can't cancel me because I believe something a certain way. Right. You know, and that's unless they go after your fucking social media and take your bank accounts and all that shit like they did to Kanye, which yeah, a motherfucker is crazy, but you can't fucking do that. I've said it before on the podcast, dude. You can't fucking a bank can't be like, oh, we don't agree with your your political or your uh, your socioeconomic or whatever stance you have, societal stance, cultural stance. So we're going to take your you can't put your money in our bank. That's fucking wrong, dude. That is wrong. You know, so it's like what they're fucking doing to the president right now. I mean, I don't know. It's just it. Well, the well, the former president. It's not the current president. We're not going to do shit to that fucking blabbering idiot. He doesn't even know where the fuck he's at half the time. He comes downstairs in the midst of a fucking school shooting, and he's asking about fucking chocolate, chocolate chip ice cream and shit. <laughs> you know. So, but we don't say anything about that fucking shit. But we're going to blast it all over the fucking media about an indictment. On someone paying a porn star to say, hey, tell everybody we didn't fuck. <laughs> did he use campaign or campaign finance? I think that's what they're looking into is did he change his business like money and like try to cover it up with business money? But is that criminally illegal? I mean, I don't know. I'm not an expert. You, they, it's a fucking hit job. It's a, it's a hit job. It's pure and fucking simple. It's a political hit job. Is he still going to be able to run for president even though he gets indicted? Like, how does that work? Yeah, there's nothing in the Constitution about uh, being a criminal. Yeah, so that, how fucked up is that, though? Because <laughs> yeah. Let's take that little segue. So if you're a fucking felon, you can't own a gun, you can't vote. There's a bunch of shit that you can't do if you're a felon. You really can't live your goddamn life unless you're like... I don't know. You figure some way out of it, but it's really hard for felons. But you can be a felon and run for fucking president. <laughs> I know. That's fucking twisted. You show up to fucking the White House. You got your ankle bra uh, bracelet on. You walk <laughs> in. You're like, yeah, I can't leave this bitch between the hours of 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. So I'm just stuck here. They try to send you over. You know, you're doing a peacekeeping miss mission in the Ukraine. You're going to meet with that fucking bozo over there. <laughs> can't can't go out of the country, man. My PO said no. That's crazy, dude. Comes up, he's got face tats, fucking green hair, been in prison twelve times, has a rape charge, but he's allowed to be president. Can't vote, you know what the fuck? Probably gonna be like the fifty second president of the United States in reality if yeah. we keep fucking going the way we're going. Exactly. Well, hopefully, you know, we'll be gone by the time that fucking comes around. I don't think I could live through that shit show, but maybe not. But maybe not, because there's a Google analyst that says, or he was a Google scientist, some shit. I don't know. Everybody worked for fucking Google. They're smart. They're smarter than me and you, I guess, maybe. But uh, saying we're going to have immortality by fucking 2030. Wow. Nice. I nice. I don't know if I want to fucking live through that, dude. When you become immortal, and there's shows like I don't know if you have you ever watched Altered Carbon? Uh, you were telling me about. It. I haven't seen it, but you told me about it before on Netflix. Pretty much, they uh, like they download. There's something in your spine or the back of your head, and it's like this little disc kind of thing. It glows. They found it on an alien planet. Some crazy shit. But people were living for like thousands of years. Wow. But I mean. Where does the will to live go? You know, the will to change things and the will to, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, if everybody can do it, what's the purpose of having children? And I don't know. I wonder if people would be in less of a rush, like in less of a hurry, you know, less motivated to do this and to do that because they know that. Hey, I got, you know, a thousand more years of this or whatever. So I don't need to scramble to get this done or be with that person or, you know, see this or that. Because I, I know I got a lifetime to do it. 99% of people would be like that, but you'd still have that 1% who just want to rule the fucking world. So that it would just create another class system, in my opinion. You know, you'd have these people that have lived for so long and that's kind of what the show goes off of too like they're the, i can't remember what they call them uh some special name for them but they're like the oldest of the old and uh like pretty much they own everything 
So that's that's how I see it. I think you'd have fucking people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, but they would just run the whole fucking roost and we'd be fucked. The, it, it, the class system wouldn't change. It would just get worse. You'd, you know, you'd be enslaved for fucking that's they would end up finding a way to like if you didn't pay your past debt from your past life, like they just keep you enslaved. And then think about too, like prison sentences. Oh, dude, that would suck. Like you can actually live through these people that get like a hundred fucking life sentences and shit. Oh my god, you're right. That'd be terrible. It just I don't know if it's a good idea for immortality. Yeah, really. And I, I don't think it's gonna be like physical immortality. I think it's gonna be more like digital. Like we're gonna fucking I don't know, dude. This shit is so fucking well. We're gonna it's if we're not already in the matrix, it's coming. What do you think of the Neuralink stuff? I mean, have you thought about the endless possibilities that the Neuralink can create? Like, shit. I mean, come on. You haven't thought about that? Oh, yeah, I've thought about it. We are already, when he even said that a couple of years ago on Joe, Joe Rogan's podcast, when he was talking about, like, you're already a, a whatever, a cyborg, pretty much. Right. Because you have that phone, like, right there. He's like, we're just going to put it in your head. Yeah, that's just insane to think about. And think about, like, because they're talking about hearing and, and seeing, like, vision and everything, because it's going to tap into your nerves. What about people with, like, nervous system disabilities, like uh, MS and shit? Like, the medical possibilities from it are amazing. But do you really want people to be able to fucking think and get Google inside their head? Like, people are just going to, we're going to be way too smart. I don't know. Maybe it's how we get to the out of this fucking solar system. But what about people with mental disorders like uh, agoraphobia and like all these uh, like, ang- you know, like high intensity anxiety, panic attacks and everything. If the Neuralink works in a healthy way, it could cure rid people of all that, you know, phobias. If it can find a way to like hit the certain like serotonin and dopamine receptors. Yeah. If it can stimulate those, that would be because a lot of mental disorders are chemical imbalances like serotonin, dopamine, uh, shit that's made by your pituitary gland, shit like that. What if there was like a program on the Neuralink where you could just immediately start tripping like a crazy DMT like (laughs) trip and set it for like as long as you want to. And then if things start getting too weird and too intense, you can tap out and everything. You'll get back normal and you'd be like, holy fuck. (laughs) Wouldn't that be crazy? Like an ayahuasca. I'm ready for it. I think I'm ready. And then you clip and then it just happens. Just hit me with a dose. Bam. (laughs) <laughs> Wouldn't that be insane? It would be wild. Like, I don't know, dude. I don't know if the world's ready for it, man. Or what if it? Ha- what if they had downloadable programs? Like, you wanted to learn Russian. Click, you click, and you already know Russian. It's fluent Russian. Well, I mean, it, maybe not know it, but because you wouldn't really even need to know it. You wouldn't need to learn it because if you have like a lot, like if it has an interface to where it's like a live transition where like that person's talking to you in Russian. Right. But all you hear is your language is, you know, so for us, say like English, you would hear an English trans- translation in their voice, but it would be in your native language. So nothing yeah. really has to change. You don't understand Russian, but it just it translates it and sends it straight to your brain like an instant translation. Yeah, it takes what's scrambled and brings it together. So you automatically you now understand it. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea, dude. Dude, I went deep on Neuralink one time. I was working by myself and you know how when you're by yourself and like the radio is not very loud and you're just thinking, you just have thoughts in your head. And uh, I went deep on Neuralink. I started thinking about all this shit we're talking about right now. Oh, I do that. It's like an everyday occurrence for me, especially when I'm driving like a long distance. I put on fucking Joe Rogan or Theo Vaughn or just whatever podcast, OBDM, I put on i'll find crazy shit to listen to or i'll put music or sometimes even just in fucking silence and i just get lost in my goddamn thoughts that's what i'm saying but going back to Neuralink, think about this it could completely eliminate any need for for public education trigonometry click you know it you understand it uh world history click done you know what i mean think about that and you just have a bank like a memory bank in our in your head now thanks to this link and it's just like remembering something you know remembering like what you ate last week let's see because storage space of 
human brain. So the human brain has 2.5 million gigabytes. A uh, human memory capacity of a human brain was testified to have equal of 2.5 petabytes. It's 1,000 to or 1,024 terabytes or a million gigabytes. So I mean, you already have your brain. If they can tap into how to use your brain to store it too. Yeah. Can, and then what if you had like what if the storage got full and you had to delete programs and look like your daughter was like dad i need help with this geometry and you're like i had honey i had geometry downloaded last month but i had to delete it to make room for uh oh, the inquisition you know what i mean well you can't help me like your brain knows no geometry at all because you've had to make room for like something else in there yeah you have, be... you have something like that just like yeah. plugged into your fucking brain sorry i can't figure out which way it's mirrored so and then so you're just like she's sitting there asking for help and you pull out your fucking flash drive and you're just like yeah you're and you can't even get it right in your head you're like which way i'm turning it the right fucking way exactly you're just clicking yeah it. hold on i need some storage space then you find out your dog ate it and shit and, you know, all that crazy stuff. God damn it, man. The dog ate my Neuralink memory bank. Fuck. All your fucking childhood memories are gone. Your dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're outside digging in dog shit trying to find your fucking second grade memories. Dude, wouldn't that imagine that? That's going to be problems we're going to have 50 years from now. It's like, okay, and you're digging through the fucking dog shit. So you hit the Neuralink to give you like the smell of something more pleasurable. And then yeah. that takes up. It's like, oh, fuck, you overused your storage. You can't. And then your fucking brain just short circuits because you like, hit. Fuck. Damn it. No, it, it starts buffering. The, the little window is like going on <laughs> in your head. And everybody's driving by you and you're just standing out in your front yard. Like that. And yeah. Everything's dude. running through your head like, fuck, what am I? And you, you can't move. See, dude, that's what I'm saying. I, I, like I said, I started thinking about this fucking Neuralink shit, and I just went and kept going and going and going and all these ideas. And fuck, wouldn't that be crazy? Wouldn't, dude? Someone's brain's gonna explode. Maybe their head's just gonna start overheating. It's gonna overheat, 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 and then it's just pop. That melon is gonna fucking go everywhere. Do you believe in spontaneous human combustion? I don't know, dude. I've never seen it. I mean, how weird is it that you don't hear about it anymore? Like, I remember when I was a kid, you know, in the supermarket and everything, it it was all over the tabloids. Like, yeah. hu human in India. And it was always in, like, India or something. You know, someone in Nepal died of uh, spontaneous combustion. So, but you don't see it anymore unless it's still happening. I don't know. Those monks do some crazy shit, man. They're like Ace Ventura, you know. The Bungholio, he's traveling through the fucking ether. So, I, I watched on Tubi. They always have those like low budget conspiracy alien unsealed document type documentaries, and there's like fifty of them. And I ended up on this one the other night, and it was about this lady who they think spontaneously human combusted. I think she was in England, but the report said that her her body was completely gone. It was just like parts of her body and the chair she was sitting on was like charred to like almost nothing, but the rest of the house was completely untouched. Was she was, an, was she an Indian woman in England? I don't know, but there was no sign of arson or fire or anything like that they said there wasn't even anything that could have caught fire where she was at you know i got so deep in government conspiracies that i really stopped looking into weird shit like that i kind of fucking hate myself for it dude yeah you should because it's pretty crazy you just go that's why i watch that unsealed document stuff because it's crazy ass theories man like i get into shit about like aliens and that's pretty much taken over my whole, maybe that's why it's not in the tabloids anymore. And it's not something you see because everything's about fucking aliens now. So maybe I, I need to do some deep digging. Maybe there was a, a spontaneous com uh, combustion yesterday, you know? Well, yeah. There's a new conspiracy theory about aliens going on right now. And this guy on a podcast was telling me about it, that he thinks that aliens are actually fallen angels. You know how God cast away Satan. 
and he was an angel and he cast away all these other angels with Satan. It was like one third of heaven he cast away. And they think that these alien sightings are actually either demons or fallen angels. I've heard that before. I don't know if I go along with that. I think there's more to the story. I think, yeah, I don't think they're demons or fallen angels. I think they're from other planets. Wouldn't that explain like ghost sightings and paranormal sightings and shit like that? Maybe, or like the ghost sightings and shit. That's more like what we were talking about the last time, you know, about the earth remembering and, and just the, the physical energy, you know, the metaphysical meets the physical. And that's how it like, you know, that's what I think about like ghosts and shit, but like aliens. Yeah. I think they're from other planets. I did see an alien news. I think it was a Pentagon guy or someone. They said that pretty much it's the way they say this shit. It's just like, they say they could like, they make it sound like a theory, but then they say it like they know. So I, you know, they know. And I think this has happened, but, uh, they're saying that there's like a mothership. And yeah, we were. We, yeah, I read about that too. And they sent pod, like they send like research pods, like we do with like the Mars rover and shit. Right. Yeah. So uh, that would explain a ton too. I mean, if you've got something that doesn't have to worry about a being's physical body, and that would explain the speed how it operates, and it just zips around, and like it can just go from zero to like a thousand miles an hour in a second. You know. That would explain that to me is like one of the best theories I've heard of, you know, have you heard about the holographic theory that all these sightings are just holographs and China is like, of course, China, they're the main people that have been able to engineer this holographic technology. And it has to do with like project blue beam and shit. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that. Well, that's like, they were fucking blasting, uh, what you call it? They were blasting Hawaii with fucking green lasers and shit. Did you see that shit? Yeah, that see, it all goes hand in hand. Yeah, it's it's all it all correlates together. But I think that's more of like they're using some kind of maybe higher sophistication lidar technology. Like you know what the lidar is, right? No, it's I so can't remember the name of me. it. Lidar is it's like a it's better than X ray. Let me, but so I don't fucking butcher it because I'm not a scientist. LIDAR, which stands for light detection and ranging, is a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulse laser to measure ranges. So, like, they're interested in, in seeing, like, underground. Um, here, I'll just show you fucking guys. What are they finding stuff under the mountains? And Yeah, like, in the Dude. Amazon and shit where the rainforest is so dense. So you see like here, that's like a LIDAR. Yeah. Okay. I've had, I have heard of that before. It's a lot of the shit that like uh, Graham Hancock talks about shit like that, you know, and using the LIDAR technology. I think uh, the first time I seen it and heard about it was, have you ever watched that show with Josh Gates expedition unknown? I have seen some of that, yeah. Where he travels to, like, those exotic locations. He went to, like, Myanmar, all kinds of, like, when Myanmar was in, like, revolt and shit. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, he visits, he visits, like, these ancient places, and it's like, how are they built? And they a lot of the stuff that he's done, like, they use LIDAR and some of it, so. But that's cool. And, like, they're saying that there's whole networks of roads in the Amazon forest that have just been grown over. Yeah, I, I've heard that too, man. Years and thousands and millions of years of uh, untouched, you know, shit. Well, that's what, like, Graham Hancock was talking about. Like, the Amazon is human engineered. Like, the fruit-bearing trees, like, all that vegetation that's in the rainforest was there because of humans. And it just, it's overgrown now. Be- and it's in the perfect climate for it to grow. Right. And... You know, these civilizations, once they died out for whatever reason, the shit just took over. So, I mean, I think that's, I think we're older than fucking people realize. I think we've done this shit a couple times, you know, and maybe even the aliens, like, how do we not know that the aliens aren't the advanced species? Like, they seen the asteroid coming that killed the dinosaurs, say, even. Like, that's crazy. That's going, like, hundreds of millions of years back, but... Who's to say that it's not true? Like they seen what was coming and they got off the planet 
and they just sent like a seed down like the and and that's another theory too with aliens is that they they uh the star seed program where aliens seed planets with intelligent life yeah i've heard of that yeah i got i went i dude aliens is my shit dude there's this dude, <laughs> craig Campabasso or Cambasso. i don't know how you say his name but he's got like a list of all the alien races and shit dude and he said that like they, crazy. you communicate with them on like the metaphysical, like by uh fucking meditating and all kinds of crazy shit. Like, I don't know, man, maybe it's fucking true. Maybe I'm not on his level. Who am I to say that he's nuts? You know? Well, you've heard of Hemisync, haven't you? Hemisync? Yeah. No. What is it? All right. It's pretty crazy, but it's, it's frequencies like uh ringing and like white noise and everything like that. And it induces different, um, like the CIA was using it to think that they could like almost hypnotize people or manipulate people. Are you reading about it? Yeah, as soon as I pulled it up, I seen it uses like binaural beats and shit. Yeah, yeah. So crazy. I know the binaural beats, but I didn't know like the name that you use for it. But yeah, yeah, it, like to set you in like it changes like beta wa- beta waves and alpha waves in your brain and shit. I wonder if like top secret people or like alien people or lizard people or whatever i wonder if they can use that to communicate with each other i wonder if that means more than what it is because you've heard that there's certain frequencies in different parts of the world that make people do weird shit have you ever heard of that yeah yeah and like certain places have this ringing and it makes the suicide rate higher and then it does other stuff to people i always thought maybe there's a way that the government's manipulating us through that you know these cell phone towers are sending off a frequency that just, it's like a dog. You can barely hear it, but yet your mind can hear it. And it, and your mind is controlled by that sound. Oh yeah. I mean, 100% agree with you, dude. And I mean, think about all the MK ultra shit, you know, they had success in that dude. They, they had some legitimate success in MK ultra. They did. And you're going to tell me that through that success, the CIA said, Oh, that's unethical. We're not going to do it. Give me a fucking break. There's no way that program. I guarantee you is still in existence. It's got a different name. It's got black budget funding through the department of Homeland security. Yeah. And like something out there, dude, they didn't just fucking end that world espionage. There's no fucking way we sit here as Americans. We're so goddamn naive. Oh, we're the good guys. Like that's where your tax money's going. Dude, they were fucking, uh dosing dudes with lsd it's like i brought up a couple weeks ago that dude that show on netflix wormwood where they're yeah. talking about the dude from fucking fort dietrich he yep. got in and he did the lsd and he started seeing some of the crazy shit they were doing he wanted out and they're like yeah there's one way out buddy and it's out of that fucking hotel window i think you're right yeah they killed him there's no way that he fucking jumped out of a double pane glass window he was thrown out of that motherfucker What's his name? Frank Dulles. He was the mm-hmm. guy that was in charge of all that shit. Dulles Airport and all that. Yeah. See, and we glorify him, you know? We yeah, just... exactly. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like we named an airport after that sicko. Dude, the Nazis got their eugenics program and the inspiration for their eugenics programs from the United States of America. See, I heard it was the other way around. I heard that they brought the Nazis into Fort Detrick and the Nazis were the ones that were teaching them about that shit. We did because they became more dude. Germans are fucking psychos. Right. Like I'm watching this show um, called the grand tour. Have you ever watched like top gear? Yeah. Top gear. You know, the British guys that were on oh, it. Oh yeah. Well, they're on oh, this yeah. show. Uh, what's his name? Jeremy Clarkson and shit. Yeah. Well, it, they were uh, talking about like German, the, they were making a joke about Germany and how they were, uh, if they take your license, he was like, he asked the German guy, how do you drive? And he's like, but you can't. And he's like, yeah, but if you need to run to the store, you know, would you, you you could get in your car and do that. He's like, no, but you can't, you don't have a fucking license. You can't drive. Like that's, they're, they're not inclined to break rules. They follow strict orders and they're like studious people, dude. They're just, that's where the Methodists came from. That's crazy. Because of their methodology and fucking religion. It's just the Amish people, most Amish people, Dutch Amish and shit are German descendants, Mennonites, German descendants. Yeah, you're right. You know, so Lutherans, German descended, that's a stricter of the Christianity religions. And so you got these Germans, I think they just perfected what we were doing. 
Yeah, you know, we yeah, were going but, around. Yeah. We were injecting fucking syphilis in people. You know, the Tuskegee Airmen and shit like that. We were telling them we were giving them a fucking vaccine and we're giving them the actual disease just to see what it does to people. I know, dude. We were so crooked back in the day and still are. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Tell me we still don't do that shit. It's just no, no, no one has the balls anymore to call it out because of fucking Herbert Hoover and like all the FBI and all the intelligence. So, dude, we're surrounded by the fucking SS, dude. Tell Plus, me, we are in Nazi fucking Germany in America. Well, yeah, because then you got news stations like CNN and and all that, and they're it's all propaganda, you know, boosting the left and the and the democratic agenda and everything like that. That's the same thing Hitler did back in World War II with Nazi propaganda. Well, even the fucking right does it. There, <clears throat> we don't have a left and right in this country. We don't have a Republican and Democrat in this country. We have the government, and they're both going to use that government. Maybe they. They sell it to the public a little bit differently. You know, they all have their issues with what they is their hot button to- topic. Or actually, I think if you ask most of them, they give a fuck less in the world. But it's what appeals to their base and their constituents, so they just say it. Right. You know, they're fucking used car salesmen, dude. I'm telling you, like I don't fucking trust a goddamn one of them. And uh, but it's and it's not out of fear of the elected uh, elected representatives. It's out of fear of unelected government officials. Right. You know, the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, the DEA, the ATF, whatever they want to fucking do, they can do. Dude, I watched that documentary. I binge watched it last week about Waco. And this is the, and it's the shit that you didn't see back then. And a lot of the fucking documentaries even glossed over it. The, the, I think it was, yeah, it was the ATF. They went in their guns fucking blazing the first day. Like, they didn't even want to talk. Like, they just started shooting. And both sides, I'm not giving David Koresh a pass here, and they were kind of fucking crazy, but the ATF went in with muscles, you know? And then you had the FBI negotiators trying to fucking uh, negotiate, and you have the hostage response team blasting fucking, like, they're, they're blasting like dying animal sounds and all kinds of crazy shit at all hours of the day, like an off the fo- uh, a phone that was off the hook, just beep, 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 just blasting it in the direction, wow. trying to drive the people crazy. Let the fucking negotiators, the negotiators were building a rapport with David Koresh. They were working towards ending the situation without the way that it did, you know, that ended up how many kids and, and innocent people died. And when they set that bitch on fire, yeah. you know, the, the fucking hostage negotiators, the people that were negotiating, they're trying to go negotiate with them. And you got the ATF or whoever driving a fucking tank over everybody's car in the middle of them trying to neg- uh, to negotiate. Wow. They didn't God want damn. fucking peace. They wanted to prove a goddamn point. Try yeah. to start a cult in the United States of America and we're going to fucking come in and get you. Try to do anything that's against what the United States of America wants. We're going to fucking come in and there's nothing you can do to stop us. And that's why American citizens don't fucking stand up for our rights anymore because we're terrified and rightly so of these fucking alphabet agencies. Right. Dude, if this goes live, man, if they don't like what I'm saying right now, I guarantee you that whisk me away in the middle of the night. They have these fucking black prisons like you you don't even hear these I don't not black prisons it's not black people going in but like these I call them dark prisons I guess where you cuz they can hold you like homeland security they can hold you with no warrant they can pretty much if they label you a, a domestic terror, terrorist you have no rights as an american citizen anymore they can those detain black, you indefinitely whatever those black site prisons you're talking about yeah that's a real deal and they have them all over the world man they t- took a bunch of al-qaeda suspected terrorists back in, in what's his name george w bush was the one that instated a lot of those black site prisons there's one in lithuania uh there's one in i think it's arkansas somewhere down south but these places are in the middle of nowhere man yeah, and, and it's always underground, like we talked about before. Most of the dirty shit the government does, it's underground. Yeah, well, and that's everybody wants to fucking ask where that you know the black budget of the 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 missing money in the budget and shit, the fifty billion dollars or whatever it is. You know, that's where everybody's it goes. like, where where'd that go? I wonder where. 
I wonder yeah. why you don't know about it. Because that's where that shit goes. You know, and that's what pisses me off. And it brings me back to the Trump shit, the political hit job there. It bring and and a step deeper on that, how he incited the fucking riots. What goddamn riot? Dude, and, and now everybody's up in arms. Even the Republicans are up in arms. Hold on, you froze out on me, so give me a second. We're going to see what's going on technical. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, I think I froze up or you froze up, so I, I don't, didn't want to keep going there. But uh, so, you know, everybody that's seen that, and both sides are so fucking up in arms about uh, Kevin McCarthy releasing those tapes to Tucker Carlson about what really fucking happened. You know, 46,000 hours of fucking tape or whatever it was, you know. Why? Because we got the goddamn truth out of it? You want to paint it as an insurrection, the bloodiest day in American history? You know, the way they paint it, it's just because they want to label these people as political prisoners, as insurgents. They want to label people like me, you, and everybody listening as a fucking domestic terrorist. That way they can suspend your rights, your constitutional rights, because as soon as you hit that label on someone that they're a domestic terrorist, all those rights go away, and you can paint the picture then. And people are fucking complicit in it, because we'll just look at the news and we'll be like, we just, and that's, the American system used to be innocent until proven guilty and the system switched. Now it's guilty until proven innocent. They'll do a million fucking news stories before the truth is actually even revealed before you get the chance to tell your side of the story. You're already fucking guilty in the court of public opinion. So who cares if they fucking lock you away and throw you in the middle of the fucking ocean? You think Trump's going to do hard time? No. No. No, if he gets convicted, I don't fucking even think they're going to have enough to convict. I think this is going to, if this might even affect his chances to win the primary. So if he doesn't win the primary, it'll get fucking dropped. If he doesn't win the presidency, it'll get dropped. Okay. And if he does win the presidency, they'll use it as a fucking reason to impeach him again. Yeah. They're just, they, they've run out of, they've exhausted every fucking possible point that they could yeah they're running out of options now dude we knew about this stormy daniels money and shit we knew about this in 2017 it's five fucking years later and you're telling me they're just now getting a grand jury to indict they're just oh before you had executive privilege no we didn't you're doing it because it's it's suiting your fucking agenda that's why the fuck it's doing. And there's probably Republicans like that no neck fish, gilly looking motherfucker, um, uh, Mitch McConnell. He's probably fucking celebrating it. That motherfucker is nothing but a no good piece of shit, cocksucking shyster, dude. Fuck him. Mo- Moscow Mitch. Yeah, fuck him. And that's the prop. Like, and it's you get these new age Democrats and these new age Republicans. Dude, I like the fire in them. And everybody wants to label them as far far left or far right. No, I think we need that. We need that open dialogue. We need people that aren't afraid to say what they think. Whether I agree with it or not, you know, they're not backed by corporate interests and 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 profits and um lobbyists. They just say what they believe. We need shit like that. We need a America for Americans and by Americans. You know, the past 50, 60 years. Since Kennedy was shot, this country has been nothing but a corporate, military, and pharmaceutical industrial country. That's all we've been. Yeah, we sell pills, right. we sell war, and we sell fucking control, mind control. Arms. We sell a lot of arms, too. Oh, yeah. We love the fucking weapons. We love the military. We love wars. I posted something a couple weeks ago. I think you even seen it. I don't know. It's like, like it was like... A, a body made out of like Boeing, Northrop Grumman and everything. And they're sitting there with like a little stick and it's poking the American flag or the continent of America. It's like, come on, do a war. <laughs> they want that shit, dude. BlackRock, they fucking make tons of money off of it. And I it know. goes 100% uncontested. Lockheed Martin, all those government funded uh, arms groups, man. And then they find the names of those companies on rifles and military arms in like venezuela or you know iran and and like uh guatemala and shit and you're like wait a second how the hell did they get there fucking mexico dude 
Yeah, the, Mexico. The Fast and the Furious operation or whatever when Obama was president when they were fucking running guns into the cartels in Mexico. I was watching a documentary about the border and everything, and they were saying most of the AR-15s and assault rifles, well, they're not assault rifles, but most of the semi-automatic carbine rifles that the Mexican cartels are using are all American AR-15s. Oh, yeah. Well, and then, like, the, the Humvees and shit. We didn't even have to sell it to them, dude. We didn't have to do anything with the CIA. Like, because you see these cartels, dude, they're running around. They're like a fucking military. Yeah. So I wonder how they got this Humvee. Because they found some dude in America, an American citizen, that hopped on one of these online government auctions where you can buy fucking heavily armored Humvees, machine gun turrets. Like, you can buy everything but the machine gun. Wow. So you can buy the whole fucking, I don't think you can buy a tank, but you can buy like these, uh, what, are they MRAPs or whatever they are, the amphibious fucking assault vehicles and shit. You can yeah. buy all these on these military surplus sites. Yeah, they got more stuff than what the Mexican police and the SWAT teams and everything have. The cartels are well, well more armed. Well, and I feel like armed. we did that. It's all by design, too. Like, we wanted, okay, so Canada, sorry. Our neighbors to the north, you're a bunch of pussies. Sorry. You're just, it's cold. It's fucking miserable. You really don't want to live there, but you're stuck. You know, your fur trader relatives moved up there thousands or hundreds of years ago, and you just kind of stuck. You know, there's a reason people don't live in fucking North and South Dakota and Wyoming and shit. It sucks. Canada is the same. So they're fine up there to our north. You know, those ones down south, we got to destabilize that country. We don't want to be surrounded by a strong country with a strong military. So we just destabilized them. You know, and the fucking cartels, dude, they're crazy. They're no fucking joke. They're wild. They are. You know, but funded by the fucking U.S. government. What do you expect? Yeah, you know, let's just give you a bunch of fucking M16s. We'll give you some 50 cal uh, caliber sniper rifles. Dude, they could take on the Mexican military. If yeah, we really yeah. cared enough about the fucking war on drugs and the war on human trafficking, we could go in there, dude, if if we said, hey, Mexico, hey, uh, Mr. AMLO or whatever his name is, the, the uh, president, we said, hey, we'll come down there and help you. We could wipe them out in a fucking day. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. They probably don't have the fight in them that the fucking – like Vietnamese and Koreans did though, they'd probably give up pretty quick. I don't think we'd end up being stuck in a war very long. I don't know. I'd be interested to see how that would go. Guerrilla warfare. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah, right in our backyard, dude. Fucking just I don't know, man. It's just the whole government and shit. Like, and that's where I get tied up and it. it's like you really trust these motherfuckers? We were buying fucking cocaine from Colombia. You know, yeah, the, the U.S. government was. It's like a cheating girlfriend or or a uh, boyfriend or husband or wife or whatever. It's like they've cheated on you a hundred thousand times, and then you still believe them when they tell you something like, "No, I wasn't with her the other night." You know, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's I like think the it's... government just lies to your face so much, and then you're gonna sit back and be like, "Well, they know what's best." I think it starts in school like and it it's with the indoctrination of, of children, even our generation. I mean, toe the line. You got to walk in a single file line. You've got to do what the teacher says. Don't question authority. You know, all that shit. The, the founders of the country questioned authority. Yeah. You know, I think it's healthy to question authority. You know, give me your fucking opinion, like even with my kids, like I might not agree with what you're saying, but. You know, you can you can voice your opinion at the end of the day. You don't have a say, but, you know, still share what you fucking feel. Don't just let me rule fucking mindlessly over you. You're saying this now. And then when the podcast is over, you're going to say to your daughters, all right, stand in the line. Wait, no, now I'll serve you. Do this. Go to the bathroom now, now, now. <laughs> no, I don't No, I don't parent like that. I mean, I do tell them I tell them what to do, but I mean, I don't know. Have some like you got to question authority, dude. They're not always right. That's been one of the best. That's why the American military functions so well, too. I'm sure you just love it when they question your authority. I mean, <laughs> most of the time they don't. So it's not really the biggest deal. But um, 
like I was reading about like other countries' impressions of the United States military, like in World War II and shit. Like, like what did Germans think about Americans? And it was like they're unimpressive. They laugh and they eat and they smoke and they try to chase our women around. But like militarily, what makes them so different than Europeans is their reckless abandon and the fact that they don't have like they don't adhere to tradition. Like we we wouldn't go fight a head to head war. We find ways around it. Yeah. And then like even like and on the battlefield, like the way that the officers don't stand out from the enlisted. They, they all look the same, you know, in, in European military, even Asian military tradition, the officers, you can always tell who the officer is, you know, because of their uniform and the way they re- address. But like the American military, you can't pick them out. And it's the ability of the American soldiers to question the fucking leaders. Like you got a major that tells you to go take that hill. And he's like, dude, it's fucking surrounded. I'm not doing that. You're not sending me on a suicide mission. But other countries, they'll go die for that hill that they'll never take. Right. Where Americans were like, fuck that. Fuck you. If you want to go do it yourself, motherfucker. Like, could you imagine being in World, World War II with a fucking, like, New York Jew? <laughs> like, or a fucking Italian or something? Fuck hey, you, motherfucker. Get out of my fucking face. I'm not going up the hill. Fuck you. I'm going to drink my coffee, bitch. Where's my bagel? <laughs> Hey, Tony, he wants me to go up a hill. I'm not going up the hill. Fuck your hill. Yeah, that's but that's Americans. That's what we do. We'd be like, yeah, don't think so, dude. You can go forget fuck about him. it. Hey, Captain Crunch, go eat your fucking cereal. <laughs> you know, that's but that's the Amer- but that's what sets us apart. And I think we can't lose that as a country, dude. We can't lose that sense of personality and what made us. We're a bunch of fucking rebels. Rodriguez, get up that fucking hill. Hey, fuck you, bro. I'm not going up the hill, man. And that's even what made us different. You there? Yeah. That's what made us different than even fucking uh, like Australia. Like those motherfuckers didn't have a chance. Like they just got sent there as a fucking penal colony. We came here. We're like, yeah, we're going to the new world. We're going to make a better life. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to make a better life for ourselves. And then we get here and then they're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna tax your tea. We're gonna tax your sugar. We're like, fuck you. You're gonna tax what? You're gonna tax this dick, bitch. <laughs> you know what we think of that tea? And they fucking dumped it in the Boston Sound. Like we didn't. That that's the American attitude. Like you're gonna do what? And we that just was, we we ran a fucking train on them bitches. This fish and crustacean that day became the most caffeinated fucking amphibians ever in the world. <laughs> you're fucking plankton down there just cracked out. They were just SpongeBob worked extra hard at the fucking Krabby Patty that day. (laughs) Yeah, there's shit. Three hours, three hours later, (laughs) Mr. Krabs down there doing a fucking jig. (laughs) Man, I don't know. Didn't mean to go on that whole fucking rant about the government, but so I guess I still got some rant in me, even though I'm uh, healthy, huh? You just got in the heat of the moment. Dude, I think about that's like, and I try not to get political and hopefully like that, what I said isn't too one-sided. I didn't really want to touch on social issues, but I mean, you know, if you trust the government left, right, up or down, maybe you should reevaluate your fucking stance and your mindset because the government's never to be trusted. I don't care if they're fucking doing everything great. They always have an ulterior motive. How did we go from Neuralink and like flipping a switch to start tripping on ayahuasca to you just <laughs> going into an insane Alex Jones fueled rant, you know, where you just and the government and you don't want to listen to the government. Just don't listen to it. <laughs> Fucking MK Ultra and mind control. Question authority. Don't stand in line. Stand to the side. Dude, I used to hate standing in line, dude. I still that's, do. That's total like prison, you know, economy thing you know like single file line look ahead you know don't touch your neighbor yeah they treat the kids like well and then their schools like we don't have them up here yet but like in florida texas they have elementary and like primary schools and shit where they have to wear uniforms like you can only wear a red polo shirt and tan khakis well that's how it is in baltimore city i think all the schools are you have to wear a uniform there 
and they sell it as a guys so because like income inequality and shit like that like they don't want kids picking on each other because their clothes aren't as good or whatever yeah like you still gonna know the poor kid oh you're still, yeah you're still gonna know who he is you're still gonna know the smelly kid yeah you know so like it's just to me that's an it's an indoctrination technique it's getting you used to wearing a uniform it's getting you used to not questioning authority to not expressing yourself they say they want you to be express expressive no they want everybody to be the same they want everybody to be fucking mindless drones that's why they push all this like this belief shit and like this diversity they want everybody to be the same they don't want equity they want equality where everybody's just as fucked as everybody else well, it's it's like we said the other week about with psychedelics. They want you to stay plugged into the system. Yeah. As long as you're plugged into their motherboard, they got you. They got you like a fish on a hook. Okay. Exactly. As soon as you unplug and you take a look around and you realize what's reality and what's not, your mentality changes dramatically. And that's one of the things Alex Jones was talking about this week on one of his episodes where he was saying like the $800 billion that they're talking about in California given to – uh for reparations for black people for slaves he yeah. said he said they're not gonna give you that 800 billion dollars they don't care about black people they're just saying it they're just showboating like i don't know exactly what he said but it's the truth they don't get the reason that they care about black people the reason they care about asians the reason that whenever they do care about white people the reason they care about transvestites and gays is because it stirs fucking division right. that's why it's always talked about because they want to scare the white people or the black people, and they want them to be at fucking odds. They want to scare straight people or gay people, real women of fake women. They want to fucking just have everybody constantly at each other's throats. Because when we're at each other's throats and we don't agree on issues, we're not going to stand together and be like, where's the fucking black budget? Right, yeah. yeah. It's it's all their little method of stoking the fire. You know, you do do one thing, it makes the fire hotter. Do another thing, it makes the fire hotter. But then they tame it. And that maybe that's why, like, whenever you said, like, why do some people get canceled and others don't? Because they've got a fucking, they've got a blower on the fire, you know? Yeah. They want to heat the house, but they don't want it to catch on fire. Right. There you go. Yeah, that makes sense. So, and they want to make it just hot enough to where it's fucking unbearable and you can't be comfortable. That makes sense. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. And that's the truth, too. Yeah, they just, they don't want a United States as much as they say that they do and no part or neither party wants it. I don't give a fuck what Josh Hawley says. I don't care what Pelosi says. I don't care what fucking that dipshit Chuck Schumer says. I can't stand him though, dude. He looks like a fucking 90 year old woman with his little, I'm not even going to go there. I can't go there. Cause I just don't like the motherfucker. Yeah, don't go there. He's always like, <laughs> he's like reading his fucking notes, dude. He's reading his notes and he's not even using his glasses to read his notes. He's looking over his glasses to read his notes. Like, Are they just there? For, they're like your glasses. They're just there for fucking show. He's like a, he reminds me of a Simpsons character. Yeah, he's like uh, fucking, what's the, what's the owner of the plant? Smithers. Or no, uh, Mr. Burns. Yeah, he looks like Mr. Burns. Tell me that motherfucker doesn't look like Mr. Burns. He's yeah, he's yeah, he does. Chuck Schumer and Mr. Burns. Let's see if the internet's probably already done it for us. So, Mr. But Burns. Mr. Burns doesn't wear glasses though. Smithers does. Okay, the internet didn't do it for us. So, but let's let's show the picture of him. I'm gonna fucking get you guys. So, put it in carrot chop. I don't know carrot chop. So right here, we have Chuck Schumer, old Chucky boy, old Chucky Cheese here. Yeah, he does look like he does look like fucking Mr. Burns. Look at that. Okay, and then we have Mr. Burns. God damn it! <laughs> they fucking got me with the picture. They got you, dude. So let's he, do get he does though. Okay, there we go. Mr. Burns, right there. That's You're Chuck right. Schumer. Yeah, same nose, same slick back hair, all that shit. Just fuck Chuck Schumer, dude. Good job, Dustin. No, the internet hadn't create, thought of that yet. You just, I'm going to make just, the meme. I'm going to make a meme now. Yeah, you should. Make the meme and put it on the Facebook. 
Chuck, uh, we're going to call him Chuck Burn, Burns. Chuck Burns. Mr. Chuck, Chuck Burns. Chuck, in quotation, Mr. Burns Schumer. <laughs> the fucking pathological representative or senator for fucking New York. The pathological reptilian. Dude, I got to take a piss like a motherfucker. So I'm going to go take a piss. You want to pause the recording or you think we got enough or we got some more to say? Uh, uh it's up to you, dude. Well, let, yeah, let, I'm going to pause real quick and pause we'll come it, back. Yeah. And, yeah so we it. can do a real outro. Even if we only go for another five minutes, we'll give you guys the outro you deserve. Yeah, exactly. Info Wars. We'll be right back after this piss break. <laughs> I've got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> All right, we're back. From the bathroom, so, and we're keeping that little tidbit in there, because I gotta go. I gotta go to the restroom. Gotta go pee. Gotta go to the bathroom. Fuck my you wife t- yesterday. I took a shit. Did you? Yeah. That's a quick turd, dude. <laughs> That's how my shits have been recently too. They've been quick, dude. I shit a fucking brick earlier. Did you? Yeah. Before I left for work, like I made up this oatmeal, and uh, I didn't want it. It. it tasted like shit it's no sugar and it just that's what i'm saying like food just there's certain foods that don't taste good to me anymore before i'd fucking smash on a bowl of oatmeal so i ate this little granola bar like the, it's called junkless it, it's like no preservatives all kinds of healthy for you yeah so i ate that i sat down there fucking started getting the rumble guts i was like god damn it i gotta take a shit and i'm like at this point because i had sat there and and watched some tv and stuff I got to be in Winchester in like an hour and 10 minutes. It only takes about 45 minutes to get down there, but still I like to have some breathing room. Yeah, me too. So I'm like, God damn it. So I came up, dude, two minutes, just a whole fucking brick, man. Oh God. I was like, how did I not have to shit before this, man? It was a massive fucking, it was one of the ones I would have sent you a picture of in the past. Oh um, my God. When I was a degenerate, you remember those days when I used to yeah. send you shit pics? Hey, yeah. This is to you guys out there. You know, y'all send your dick pics. I said shit pics. <laughs> yeah, I got a few back in the day. <laughs> he'd just be unassuming. I was like selling cars at a car dealership or something. And he'd just be sitting there going about his day. I think he's probably still working in produce or fucking seafood or whatever you were doing. He's just going about his day. And then ding, he gets this fucking message. Dustin Hutzel. I wonder what he sent. Oh, that's great. A fucking porcelain bowl with a big ass fucking brown snake in it. Yeah, I'm thinking, oh, that's awesome. So the guy down there where you were at just bought a fucking Ford Fiesta from the guy that took a hot, steamy one two seconds before they pulled in. Hey, he bought the Ford Fiesta after I just had a hot siesta in the fucking bathroom. It's fucked up, man. I was dropping off fucking tacos. <laughs> <laughs> dude i had and that's an, like the great thing about this medicine too like i told her i told my wife last night i said you know well i told her during the day actually i was because we were having tacos for dinner i think yeah. that was last night i don't remember what maybe that was last night or the night before whenever we had tacos i can't remember when it was but i was like you know i normally eat like four or five tacos dude and i was like make me two and she's like you sure that's gonna be enough and like when we went grocery shopping last week for the taco meat and shit, I was like, get some black beans to put in. I don't like fucking beans like that. But it's like, I ate it and I only ate those two. Five. I was stuffed after two tacos. Dude, you don't even eat two tacos. You're a small guy. You eat fucking like three tacos. You said black beans since she just dropped the entire basket and just looked at you like. Yeah, she's been amazed. She's like, hey, she was telling someone at work. She's like, I feel like I'm not supportive. She's like, because we've done this, you know, in the past, so like where we've tried to eat healthy and then, you know, tornado fucking dusting comes in. Like, we'll buy the healthy food and then it's like, fuck this. Going back to the store and I'll just buy all the shit that I didn't buy. So then we she, end up with. She's at work telling her girlfriends, and you know what? Dustin wanted black beans the other night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but she's like, I was like, it's been, you know, a week now, full week. Actually, yesterday was a full week. I was like, when we go to the grocery store, like usually the fucking snacks, man, they would pull my attention. I'd be like, oh, they got a new Reese cup cookie or, you know, something like that. I'm going to look at it, dude. 
I don't even look at it. It's not even, it doesn't get my attention. Like I'm sitting there pouring over vegetables and what kind of melons and like what I want. Like I want fresh shit. Like that's what I feel like I want. Dustin's like feeling the star fruit. Like, yep, this is a ripe one. Yes. <laughs> even meat, like I, and you know me with red meat. I really don't want it, dude. I want chicken. Dude, I thought of an awesome bit that would be so funny for a video. It's like we go in somewhere and at Walmart. We're ma- we're doing like a fake like TikTok parody, and we're like, "Yo, I'm at Walmart right now in Hagerstown. I just wanted to expose these racist motherfuckers, man." You go down the international aisle. You go to where the black beans are. You know how sometimes they say Negro instead <laughs> of black because it's in Spanish and everything. You look, look at these racist motherfuckers, Negro man. Come on, dude. This ain't the slave days, man. Put this shit away. You go down to cracker aisle, you go to Ritz, it says Ritz and then cracker underneath. And it's like motherfuckers cracker, man. Another racist derogatory term, man. We'll have to dye our hair fucking purple or something before we do it. Would that be so funny though? Yeah. yeah. We'll come in with like, uh, We'll come in with Bernie Sanders shirts on and shit. <laughs> Fucking have a, we'll be looking at the nutrition labels next. The trans fat. What the fuck does trans fat mean? Yeah, You exactly. insensitive fucking cunt. Oh man, them motherfuckers trying to call me fat. I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get a thing of salsa and they're calling me fat, man. Fuck them motherfuckers, man. Oh, they got, yeah. Cause they got, that's two times types of fat too. So Two times, uh, two types of shame, I should say. They're yeah. trying to shame you for being fat, and they're shaming you for being a trans. Right, exactly. Trans fat. Oh, are all trans people fat? Is that what you're trying to say? You could go down the cake aisle and like go to like the Betty Crocker. It'll be like an all white cake. You know, oh, all white. Oh, you white power motherfuckers in here, all white. Okay, I got your all white right here, motherfucker. Yeah, why's the flower got to be fucking white? Yeah, exactly, dude. Wouldn't we that be want so some f- fucking black flower, bitch? Black Wouldn't flower, be- black power, motherfucker. Wouldn't that be so funny? We go and then like go to the bl- the olives, like the black olives will be on the bottom. Oh, okay. I see how y'all motherfuckers are. You put the blacks at the bottom. Okay. All right. Yeah, I see how you're doing it. Yeah, motherfuckers. You took, a- took us from the back of the bus. Now you want to put us on the bottom of the shelf. Dude, wouldn't that be great? We should totally do <laughs> that, man. Dude, those employees would be looking at us like, what the fuck is wrong with these two idiots? Especially if it's one, like, we'd have to pick one that's, like, in Cumberland or something. We'd have to go, yeah. some, maybe even further than that, i go out to Cumberland. we have to go up to, like, fucking Carlisle, PA, or fucking Harrisburg, or somewhere away that they don't recognize us. Because we'd get fucking caught somewhere. We'd be like, don't I know you? It, it, dude, just and just go extreme. Go to the pickle aisle, and, like, we're the ones that say, like, sweet and sweet midgets. Oh, midgets, not little people. Smash. <laughs> Fuck you. Fucking gherkins. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. What I do you thought... got against people with small dicks, pickles? Mount, o- <laughs> Mount Olive, Vlasic. You got a problem with people with little gherkins? They go to the burgers when they're in the chubs. Oh, 80% chub. Oh, so you don't like chubbies now. Okay, fat shame. <laughs> All right. That'd be what's awesome. What's wrong? What's wrong with me? I'm chubby. Fuck you, dude. What is there's there's a bunch of weird fucking name food too, dude. It, the possibilities are endless. That's what I'm saying. I went through there one day and I was just cracking up thinking of this bit, man. You know, sweet rolls, sweet rolls. <laughs> oh, you think I'm sweet now? Oh, he thinks I'm gay. Yo, I'm not gay, dude. Get away, man. We don't have anything about against gay people, but you know, it's just not for me. Do you ever see those TikToks, man? Like, like what we're explaining, where it's just corny like that. You know, people go in there and they're and when they make them, they're being serious. We're just being funny, but they're being serious. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Looks what's I've going on it. at Whole Foods right now. Oh, fucking Whole Foods, man! I tell you what. And then they go to something, they show it, or they'll be like, they won't even be at like Whole Foods. They'll be in like their little fucking dark dungeon basement, their mom's basement or their grandmother's basement, and they'll yeah. be like. Let me tell you about my experience at Chipotle. Yeah, yeah, I hate those videos, dude. They wanted to charge me extra for guacamole. They always give me extra guac, but whenever I went in this time, the guy said it was cock or guac. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're bitching because they charged you for a fucking product? (laughs) But they always give it to me for free. (laughs) It's because they're... Fatphobic. 
Exactly, dude. We could totally make a good. We could. It'd be so funny. How the fuck are they fat phobic? Like you start looking around, like what? What are you talking about? People want to be fucking. That's back to the government. Back to the rant. It's part of the problem with the fucking country. People want to be fucking victims. It's a victim. Yeah, it's a victimhood mentality in this goddamn country. Always looking for someone that did something wrong to you. People fuck everybody. Like you're gonna get fucked over in your life. It's gonna happen. It doesn't mean that there's this grand fucking conspiracy that's out to get you in, individually. But that's the truth, though. Every Everybody's got a, a hard luck story, you know? People say, oh, I've been through a lot. Oh, I've, I've been through a lot in my life. Who hasn't? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Who, who has had a perfect life? Nobody. And that's what I say to people all the time, too, because, like, when I do say, like, I have my set of opinions, my morals, my beliefs – my political stances, my personal stances on society and everything. But perspective, like your reality is your perspective. Right. Because you lived your life a certain way and no one lived their lives the same way. So the reason I view things a certain way is because of my upbringing, my circumstances, my situations and everything has helped mold me to where I am. And that's why I try not to judge anybody based off what they believe or feel because we're all different. We all have had a different experience in life. Exactly. You know, but I think thinking that someone's there's, like I said, there's a grand conspiracy out for you. Like those motherfuckers at Mountain Dew, they knew that I like Mountain Dew pitch black. And what do they do? They go and say it's a limited edition release and they're going to end it just because Dustin Hudson in Hagerstown, Maryland loves Mountain Dew pitch black. They're not doing it because it's a fucking promotion. They're trying to make money for their company. No, they're doing it just to fucking, you know, single you out and give you just a little taste of something you like and then jerk it away. That's how self-centered people are. They did it because of me. It's called using supply to create a fucking demand, making a promotion, a limited time. And that's why places like Pizza Hut and Domino's and Little Caesars, their pizza sucks because they got stuck in the rut of their promotional pricing. You know, they pretty much set the name of their price of a pizza from those places at what 9.99 because they ran that special for so goddamn long it lost its value and it became the price right you know then that's no you need to do something special have your normal prices and then do it like half off like alex jones's fucking store that motherfucker's always running a 50 percent clearance sale (laughs) you're just paying the price of the item yeah like that's what it costs. So you're just trying to lure people in by saying it's on sale. Right. But there is no sale. You're just no one's gonna buy it when you try to take it back up. You're never gonna be able to take it back up to the whole wholesale, like re not wholesale price, but the real retail price, because you dil- diluted your margins with promotional sales. Yeah, it's just a marketing gimmick. And it's stupid. But people are going to feel like it's like, so say Pizza Hut fucking goes to raise their prices on pizzas. There's going to be that one dude that makes a fucking TikTok video about it and is going to think, you know, they're going to be so fucking vain that they think it's entirely about them and that they're the whole reason. I made that TikTok video. Remember two weeks ago, whenever I made it and it was just a rumor, it was just a rumor on Facebook. I seen it. And now Pizza Hut is raising their prices back. Remember that they did it because they seen my video. That's how they get. They're incensed to buy it. It's like, dude, get the fuck over yourself. (laughs) Are you ready to uh, wrap it up or you got anything else you want to share? Yeah. um, One thing I do want to share, we kind of like I said, the Wizard of South Mountain, and I just started going on sideways. If you guys remember from the last episode, the Wizard of South Mountain, Michael Zittle Jr. Dramatic pause there. I'm fucking related to him through marriage, dude. My great-grandfather, great-great-great something grandfather that was back in the 1700 days when he was around, his sister fucking married him, dude. So you're a wizard too? Yeah, I am. I started, I was doing it like you said, the one day, fire, fire. I was doing that (laughs) and you know what? There was a lady in England and she fucking spontaneous combusted in her living room. (laughs) <laughs> it worked it worked so on that note uh the wizard will cast a spell and end the show appreciate you guys for listening again i'm dustin my partner will say goodbye will goodbye will <laughs> catch y'all next week bye